magic and alchemy. Alchemy and magic. An inseparable pair of polar opposites. What one does, the other reciprocates in turn. Each had light and dark. Methods that were shunned but accepted. Demons to be made peace with. And then came the black alchemy. You see, light alchemy was harmless if not beneficial. Medicines, cleaning potions, and many more. The production of dyes, for example, involves some of the Imperium's finest alchemists. The same could be said for light magic. Healing spells, levitation and cloaking, the conjuring of fire and wind, even the combat magics, all fall under the same light category, even if the lines are blurred. Then, there's dark alchemy, and its twisted twin of dark magic. Poisons, venoms, so-called snake oils, potions and substances meant to harm and deceive. Such acts are shunned but practiced. An assassin's toxin can be used to slay a tyrant or a hero, betray or to save. Dark magics are much in the same. Spells that control and break the mind, torture spells, illusions, necromancy. Despite what the High Elders would tell you, Silius the Great Mage himself practiced these. He sued the dragon of Mount Farin, not with fire or wit, but with deceit and an army of the dead. Of course, none come close to the cursed black alchemy. While the humans may revere their leader, we all spit on the name of the Wicked King. The horrors he unleashed dwarf the myths of legend. Long may the great demonic war be burned into our memory, for the demon lords of Castle Vindicare are a testament to why the humans ought to be scorned. It began with the Fey Civil War, the death of King Serrano leaving Prince Hop and Princess Erica squabbling for the throne. Our noble Imperium supported the magnificent Hop, but Terror supported the bewitching Erica. Through thievery and lies, Hop was forced too from his rightful spot on the throne, fleeing to the safety of our lands. Fleeing for the lives and prosperity of all Fey, the High Elders called upon the army of Norgen to help. Proudly, we marched into the False Queen's domain, for we knew our might was right. The Fae were tiny, dainty creatures that held weak wings and only reached a third of our height. Their armies were small and soldiers were puny. By the end of the month, our mission was to be complete. At least, it was until we encountered the humans. An army of the most vile scum, mercenaries hand-picked by the Wicked King and sent to do his bidding ravaged our righteous men. They swore loyalty to the False Queen and became agents of evil. Like bandits they struck in the night, raiding our camps, setting fire to our supplies, slitting the throats of our beloved commanders. We punished them False Queen supporters for this. What the humans took or destroyed from us, we did in turn. No Fey, be it man, woman or child, ought to be allowing such carnage to happen. The dishonorable cowards refused to even send their army to properly fight. They merely hid behind the walls of the False Queen's castle, as the humans brutalized us from the shadows. The False Queen refused to even surrender and face the justice of the Blade. Our army was mighty, but it was not prepared for such a drawn-out battle. What supplies we could not scavenge or create, we took from the heinous countryside as penance. Despite our victories, if they could be called that, what many vile human mercenaries we could slay were always replaced by more. It seemed that no matter what valiant effort we made, those demons would always seek to oppose us. I was sent as a bodyguard for the noble prince on the delegation to the Orc Goblin Alliance. The High Elders were planning the liberation of the Wicked King's subjects and couldn't spare more men to help our plight. Thus we searched for allies to help us in our crusade. The Orcs and Goblins were bitter after their loss to the humans and Fae decades ago. The simple-minded Bruce needed no more convincing than the promise of lost land and bounty to join our righteous cause. Sweet words of the noble prince and the high elders working like magic. Thus, while the wicked king was distracted, sending more of his poor subjects off to die for the false queen, we struck. Our armies were fierce and relentless, backed by the might of the Imperium. Despite the clever tricks and technologies the Terran army held, they could not help but buckle under our weight. The road to the wicked king was clear, and it was only a matter of time until we reached it. Soon we encountered not just what little human soldiers were left, but militia and civilians. The foolish humans were convinced to die for their tyrant. Despite our gracious officer surrender, they always refused. Thus we marched on, trampling out what little resistance remained. 
and then came the Black Alchemy. Deep within Castle Vindicare, the Demon Lords concocted mixtures that surpassed all alchemy that came before it, unleashing the horrors beyond comprehension that were locked in the dungeons of the castle. Like a caged rabid animal, it attacked us, savagely and without warning, sparing no man and killing all. The Devil's Breath was a poison that tainted the very air we breathe, blistering and boiling the skin as your organs rotted inside of you. Carried by the wind, the acidic clouds would smother the battlefield, suffocating the unfortunate few trapped within it, and mutilating those who could escape beyond recognition. Then came the White Fire, contained within flimsy metal barrels as great siege engines hurtled them towards the battlefield. It burned brighter and hotter than any spell or blaze, sticking to all that it touched as it was scorched under the relenting heat. If even so much as a drop landed on your skin, you were burned down to the bone. Those that survived the burns would, by some monstrous alchemy, almost always later die a slow and painful death. At last he came, Sayrin, the most vile of all black alchemies. Clear and without odour, terror mages would coat the battlefield with it as drops of death rained down. It would be a miserably slow, agonising end. The men I watched die before me would meet a twitching and disgusting fate, their bodies failing them within minutes. To see a brave soldier, loved by his men and longed for by his family, watch as his own body convulsed and spasm as it defecated and vomited is not a fate I wish upon anyone. Under the horrors of the Black Alchemy, we were forced to retreat. Our mages were powerful and righteous, armies were plenty, but in a storm where one drop rain means death, we were helpless. That is why the High Elders were forced to concede. Why the False Queen sits on the throne to this day. Why the lands once teeming with life were left polluted and wrecked. And why we spit on the name of the Wicked King. Despite the suffering they bring and the terror they inflict, the Terrans continue to use their Black Alchemy. New names, brought to us by weary travellers and traumatised refugees, sow fear into the hearts of even the bravest Elven warrior. Chlorine. Cyanide. Faustian. And VX. More horrors concocted by the demon lords of Vindicare, and gleefully used by the Wicked King. Long has it been since the Imperium has faced an enemy such as this. I pray for the wisdom of the High Elders and the blessings of the gods to lead us through this. But remember this. Our enemy is only humans. They are weaker than us, smaller than us, with shorter and more meaningless lives. Someday, someday soon, young one, the Wicked King will grow old and decrepit, as we remain strong and pure. He will die as we sharpen our blades, ready to attack. The devil's breath took my sight, but yours will remain true and clear. Heed my final wish. Strike at that vile kingdom. Fight with the might of elven right, and tear down their castles. Destroy their black alchemy, so that it may never be used again. Slay the demon lords like the devils they are, and punish the people for their wicked sins. Only then will we be safe. Only then will the other races be liberated. Only then may we all prosper.